Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at a typical ring galaxy. This one is actually very well known, this is known as the Hoag's object. But even today, we still don't really know how these objects came to be. Their origin is a bit of a mystery. But wait, don't leave yet, because we're not really talking about ring galaxies. We're talking about the wormholes, because at least one paper out there proposes that these galaxies were probably created through the formation of different wormholes across the universe. So yeah, we're going to be talking about a very theoretical but also somewhat intriguing paper. The paper that as always you can find in the description below and the paper that I discovered while doing research on the newly discovered mysterious objects known as odd radio circles. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail because even though it is theoretical, it still is interesting and could actually make sense. And let's start with the theory. The theory behind wormholes is pretty solid. Theoretically and mathematically, we do believe that they can exist and possibly do exist. And all of the theoretical explanations about wormholes starts with the Einstein's predictions in regards to space-time itself, with wormholes being a kind of a shortcut or a connection between two different points of space-time. Now in his theories he predicted the idea behind black holes and the idea behind white holes. And although we've confirmed one of his ideas, the black holes, the white holes have never really been found and nothing we've seen in the universe so far has in any way resembled any of the predictions of what white holes should look like. Nevertheless, we still understand that space-time can be stretched, it can also be bent, it can be twisted, and it can technically connect to different points. For example, this image right here shows you the famous prediction from 1935 of what Einstein and another physicist by the name of Nathan Rosen proposed could be possible between two different sheets of space-time. They could hypothetically connect to one another and create a kind of a hole in between. This is also sometimes referred to as the Einstein-Rosen bridge. And here a typical wormhole would contain two different mouths and one throat. You kind of hypothetically go through the throat to get from one mouth to the other. The mouth itself, just like in Interstellar, would not really be a hole but a 3D sphere. The sphere would be the hole, because you know in three dimensions a hole is actually a sphere. Once you go through one sphere, you come out on the other side. But the natural question here is of course, can we go through a wormhole and obviously do they exist and do things go through them to begin with? And this is kind of where we come to the point where the mathematics and the physics don't really agree with what we want to believe and with the science fiction we get to see in the movies. So for example, mathematically or in terms of physics, in order for a wormhole to stay open, it needs to somehow prevent the gravity from shutting the wormhole down. Now theoretically we believe that wormholes may have actually existed in the early universe, especially as the universe started to expand very suddenly, but it's also possible that all of these mouths, all of these wormholes, have actually been closed a long time ago by the forces of gravity. In other words, something has to act on the actual throat of the wormhole in order to prevent it from shutting down and from essentially closing permanently. But is there anything that can keep the wormhole from closing down and from shutting down permanently? Well, in theory, mathematically speaking, negative energy is one such thing that can try to resist gravity from shutting down the wormhole. In other words, certain types of exotic energy and exotic matter could hypothetically prevent a wormhole from shutting down. But a lot of this exotic stuff only exists on paper. Most of it has never been produced. And the idea of negative energy, well, it theoretically is possible. As a matter of fact, one type of negative energy is what we believe dark energy is. So that strange energy that exists in a universe that seems to cause it to expand faster and faster is one type of negative energy. We kind of think we understand it, at least mathematically, but we obviously have no idea if it can actually go inside a wormhole and prevent it from shutting down. Theoretically, obviously, it's possible. As a matter of fact, theoretically, it's possible that the universe has been doing this for billions of years. We just don't really have any physical proof of any of this. In other words, we don't really know if this negative energy can indeed prevent a wormhole from shutting down. But we do know that if they do exist, there should be ways for us to detect the effects around this wormhole and thus prove its existence that way. Now interestingly, if you were to go on Archive or really any other scientific website and look up wormholes, you'll find thousands of scientific studies on the topic. As a matter of fact, it seems like every week there's a new study either describing what a wormhole could be 
or how we can find them, or even studies trying to prove that we've already detected them, just never really realized that we're looking at a wormhole. For example, there are several studies that suggest that the object in the middle of our own galaxy, the object known as Sagittarius A star, could hypothetically be a wormhole. And there are actually very specific ways we can establish if it's a wormhole or a black hole. But at the moment, we can't really discover which one it is yet because a wormhole would have slightly different gravitational effects on the nearby stars. So by watching these stars that you can see right here for much longer periods, we'll actually be able to establish which one it is. Is it a black hole or a wormhole? For now, most people agree that it's most likely a massive black hole. Nevertheless, because mathematically and physically it can totally exist, for many years now, various scientists have been trying to discover any kind of a proof for the existence of these unusual and somewhat mysterious but also super exciting objects. And although mathematically they're definitely possible, and physically they can definitely exist, it seems that discovering them has been extremely challenging and also trying to maintain their existence, even in theory, is also not very easy. Which I guess takes us to this new paper from the Russian scientists that suggest that, well, maybe, just maybe, the wormholes are actually created in the middle of these unusual galaxies known as ring galaxies. And also, maybe, just maybe, we've also seen the signs of these wormholes, or at least the interaction of these wormholes, very recently. Which in some sense actually connects two different mysteries and tries to resolve both of them at the same time. So, as I mentioned before, ring galaxies, like the Hoax object here, don't really have a very clear origin. We know they exist, we know they're absolutely beautiful, and we know there's a lot of them out there. And some of them have really unusual and really difficult to explain shapes, yet others, like the famous Hoax object, seem to even have a ring galaxy inside of them. Although technically, this other smaller galaxy is not just inside, it's much, much farther away, simply because of the redshift that it's exhibiting. But these unusual galaxies still don't really have a very good explanation for how they were formed. And they also seem to exhibit certain properties that are still not very well explained either. And when we find something mysterious in the universe, there are going to be naturally a lot of interesting explanations. One such explanation is that maybe, just maybe, these ring galaxies formed around a very massive wormhole that either existed in the past or even still exists there today. And the scientists in this paper explain that essentially by having a wormhole and certain effects of this wormhole right at the center, it would then force the matter around itself to form in such a way that it would actually form a ring. What's more is that they also suggest that sometimes when this matter falls into this wormhole, it's obviously going to collide with some of the other matter on the other side, as it's probably falling into the second mouth on the other side. But the thing is, at some point, some of this matter will collide and produce a tremendous amount of gamma rays and a lot of other radiation, which will seem like it's emanating from the center of this particular galaxy or from essentially the center of the wormhole. Now, we know that black holes can definitely produce gamma rays, but we also know that for a typical black hole, the energy released is going to be in a kind of a point form. It's going to be these two jets emanating from both directions. And that's because of the way that the black hole and the accretion disk essentially entangle everything using the magnetic lines and cause them to be released in two different directions. But unlike a typical supermassive black hole, a wormhole is not going to produce jets, but is instead going to produce a sphere of gamma ray emissions or a sphere of very, very powerful emissions of some other sort. So in other words, it's going to look sort of like a spherical bubble, a bubble around a relatively massive object in the middle. Now, this is one of the explanations for how these rings were formed, but what's more interesting is that this is how the scientists in this paper also explain the mysterious odd radio circles, also known as orcs, that were only discovered less than a year ago from when I'm making this video. You can learn about them in one of the videos somewhere right there. And so the scientists here are trying to basically solve the mystery of why orcs exist and essentially explain it as the emissions from these wormholes that probably exist in the center, but also explain how the ring galaxies formed as well. And furthermore, they also explain that a lot of these ring galaxies only formed because of the wormholes in the middle. Basically here, the wormhole, or the actual mouth of the wormhole, provides the gravitational foundation for the formation of everything else in this galaxy. And because of this, the scientists also mentioned that they don't think that there's going to be a very large dark matter halo here. In other words, the matter here is going to be mostly visible, there's going to be practically no dark matter. 
And all of these propositions, at least at the moment and at least mathematically, are not really that far-fetched. There's obviously no physical proof of the, any of this just yet, and there are obviously other explanations that can be used to maybe explain all of this, but it's still a proposition that's worth investigating. Especially since wormholes and white holes are actually a predicted phenomenon in Einstein's theories, and black holes have already been proven and even found to exist physically. But there is, however, an important uh, side note here. It does not mean that if these wormholes exist, we can start traveling across them. Because mathematically and theoretically, any regular matter passing through a wormhole can actually completely shut it down, destabilizing everything in between and basically making it not exist anymore. So theoretically at least, there is probably still no way for us humans and our spaceships to travel through these wormholes and to go from one location to another. But despite all of this, it's still really, really important for us to study these objects, even in theory. And there's one really important reason for this. Today, the physicists have been trying to figure out the so-called theory of everything. The theory that can connect all of the different physics in basically one single topic. More importantly, they've been trying to find a way to connect the quantum mechanics to the theories of Einstein and the theories of gravity. So far, no such theory exists. But we know that the idea of wormholes to some extent connects to the idea of quantum teleportation that has already been achieved in the lab. Which means that there is a way for us to theoretically connect quantum mechanics and quantum teleportation to the gravitational theories related to wormholes and space-time travel. And most of this is because the quantum teleportation that has been achieved in the lab works in a very similar way to how mathematically we think a typical wormhole would transfer information as well. And so in that sense, by studying wormholes and by studying the effects of gravity in the wormholes, and obviously by trying to find them somewhere out there and possibly even finding one somewhere out there, we might one day be able to create this theory of everything and finally understand how the universe works. For now though, it's definitely a very interesting proposition and it's also a pretty interesting idea to begin with. If the ideas that these scientists propose have any merit, it means that we can actually solve a lot of mysteries with a single explanation. But for now, we definitely need more studies, we need more investigations, and we obviously need a lot more observations of various galaxies and various unusual phenomena out there. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.